So now in this video, I'm gonna talk about the order of components. So right here, we have a common circuit you learn when you first learn basic electronics. It's a resistor protecting an LED. We have a five volt power supply here. I set the bench power supply to uh, five volts. And uh, once I get a good connection, it will steady. There you go, we got five volts there. The resistor is before the LED. That's what you pretty much always see in schematics. You may see it uh, wired differently though. In this case, of course, the LED is a semiconductor and the anode has to be more positive than the cathode for it to light up. If you put it in backwards, it's just gonna block all of the voltage. So, there's uh, no voltage, or no current right now. There you can see we have five point, uh, let's get the voltage on there. We have the power supply voltage across there. And it's probably exactly, there we go, exactly. So that means there's virtually no voltage across the resistor. I have them backwards, but that's okay. You just get a negative symbol. So there might be a little bit of voltage. There is a tiny bit of leakage through the LED. And uh, very, very small, even while it's reverse biased. And then that uh, will put a little voltage across the resistor. So in any case, main takeaway is we have to forward by this for it to conduct and light up. So we're going to go over here. Now we're going to put the LED before the resistor, or towards the positive side of the power supply in relationship to the resistor. We still need the anode towards the uh, positive side there. And then the cathode, the negative side, we will bring the uh, resistor here. It works exactly the same. And so some people, they, uh, they get a little confused about this. But again, we have five volts at the rail right there and across the LED we have 2.1 volts across the resistor now we'll have about uh, 2.9 volts and there's 2.9 again I put the pros backwards but that's no big deal right there 2.9 volts and if we come back here and uh, wire the way that we did before LED towards the negative side resistor towards the positive the voltages are probably going to be completely exactly the same. There, there might be slight variations due to uh, different reasons, but uh, there you can see 2.1 volts across the LED, and then 2.9 volts across the resistor. So the LED is blocking some voltage. It just takes some voltage before it conducts. It passes the rest of the voltage to the resistor, which limits current after that point. Of course, if it's blocking more voltage, as it does reverse bias than the power supply can provide, then it's blocking all the voltage. You, you ran out of voltage. There's none to pass on to other components. So now, we can even expand this. So it's, it's about order. So this probably makes sense to most people, but uh, I saw a Reddit question that brought this up, and I've had a comment before, uh, at least once about uh, the order. So we're gonna take a resistor, LED, resistor, LED, and so the LEDs look about the same brightness, but there's actually about half the uh, current going through them. And these LEDs just, you can't really nail how much current's going through them by their brightness, but uh, definitely the amount of current affects the brightness. So they're blocking a little less voltage. That's the one LED right there. So this LED has a resistor between that one and then it has another resistor on that side which is far from there and this one again it has the same voltage drop and a lot of that has to do with the color of the LED and how much current is going through it. More current it blocks a little bit more voltage less current a little less voltage. And now the resistors. So we'll go across the resistors and they're gonna split up the rest of the voltage right there we have uh, 0.6 volts there, and then, uh, yep, right there. The same voltage there across them. They're splitting it up because they have equal values of resistance. So some components block a certain amount of voltage, and whatever they block, the rest of the voltage goes to the other component. So that blocks some, 
and then that blocks them and then these two they don't block voltage but they set current based on the voltage across them so they do have voltage across them that pushes the current and that voltage builds up there as long as you don't sap it away from there and we can even add one more resistor so again this is uh, probably makes perfect sense to most people watching this but it is something that kind of trips people up so don't feel bad you know this uh, electronics is kind of confusing at first but once you study it a bit it it gets a lot easier so there we go there you can see the LEDs are really really dim right now that's because we still have 5 volts as I said before these were blocking 2 volts at higher current now it's lower current and you can see it's only blocking about 1.6 volts now so this is really about the minimum it's it's gonna go down to uh, it's gonna block about this much voltage no matter what so you're gonna see the LEDs get brighter and I'm going to uh, set the power supply to 10 volts and so we probably still have less you'll see that we got uh, 10 volts there and now across each resistor 2 volts so not as high as we got before with just one LED and 5 volts I short circuited that that's why it went out and uh, or lost a connection or something so there we go we got about 1.9 volts across each of the LEDs and each of the resistor you'll see that we have a voltage across them 1.3 volts and ultimately the voltage is going to get split up among the resistors by their resistance since these are equal value resistors they're 220 ohm resistors by the way you'll see that a lot with uh, 5 volts uh, 220 ohms and because it's safe to uh, put 5 volts directly across a 220 ohm resistor you can even use lower value resistance but this this is a uh, uh, getting kind of close to the uh, perfectly safe line but there you can see same uh, voltage across the resistors they're equal value so a series circuit can only pass one current the same currents flowing through all of the components in a loop it's just circling around it's going back to the power supply this one's plugged into an outlet so it gets more complicated but to make things simple if you want to go positive to negative conventional current it's flowing through those resistors and then to that wire in a, a steady path it's not like one charge at a time shooting through it's a like a train of uh, of uh, charges so they used to think that charges were positive and move from positive to negative now we know electrons move from negative to positive but the process is exactly the same you just think of negative moving one way being the same as positive moving the other way it's a moving of charges as long as the components are inserted into the circuit the proper way ultimately it doesn't matter at the atomic level what's happening as long as you uh, wire it properly and again we don't have to go start with a resistor at the uh, positive rail we could have the resistor start at the negative rail again as long as the LED is in the proper direction so we'll do a one LED and I'm not going to take the voltage measurements will be exactly the same other than there might be like a little resistance in the wires that doesn't exist on the other side or whatnot so there's small variations but for the most part it's uh, practically the same now we'll put two that was actually I still have it at 10 volts I should have set it at 5 volts there so now we'll go to uh, that was probably exceeding the limits a bit and that's one reason why some of these LEDs are not as bright as other ones I accidentally I put that in backwards there we go that's that's the other problem with kind of wiring things differently is sometimes you will accidentally put them in backwards so we got there I put that resistor to positive so that's the thing uh, I'm used to the resistor going positive and uh, and then the other side of the resistor the LED you know the positives coming from the resistor and then the LED goes to the negative so that's uh, that kind of tripped me up there so even though electrically it doesn't matter which way you put it in when you're building circuits you're going to get used 
two uh, different things and so you should keep building them the way you're, you're used to and ultimately you should build it ways other people are used to too but there we got uh, two volts 2.1 volts across that LED and uh, basically uh, 2.1 volts there a little less so this one is blocking a little less voltage for whatever reason but you can see it is really close so uh, this one may be blocking a little more because we we just put I think a little too much current through it and that may have wore it down a little bit so it may have slightly different electrical properties now but the resistors should whatever these are blocking the uh, the voltage blocking uh, it you know happens at the same time as the resistance limit, limiting current but they're a lot more predictable how much voltage they're gonna block and then the rest of the voltage will be divvied up across the resistors so the resistors they're they're kind of setting the current after the uh, voltage drops take place and uh, the rest of the voltage will go across them and their resistance will split up evenly again some of these resistors because uh, I just put too much current probably through uh, this resistor and so that may have uh, altered it a little bit if you put too much current through it so let's see how much current we actually had through uh, I'll pop that resistor out and that LED out and we'll set this to measure current so I'm gonna go to uh, milliamps of current will definitely be in the milliamp range I don't have to move the uh, red probe for this meter some meters to measure milliamps you have to set it in a different uh, slot I only have to do that for the amp range so we're uh, plenty safe there let's see what uh, the uh, current is going through here make sure we measure it the right direction there you can see it's 35 milliamps of current so that's twice the recommended through an LED it'll probably still run for a while at uh, that current maybe even for a long time I don't know I haven't uh, accidentally uh, put that much current through an LED uh, at least for long periods of time in, in at least a while so let's see what the uh, voltage is across the uh, resistor We'll go, we'll go to voltage because we have to complete the circuit for that. So this is going to get hot real fast. Oh, I put it to positive again. So that is why, that's probably the main reason why the LEDs come to the positive side of the circuit resistors and the negative because it gets confusing when you're wiring it up later on. So let's see what voltage we have across the uh, resistor. So 7.66 volts. And I'm going to turn the uh, power supply off. So now it takes some time to warm up and that's the that's the danger with electronics the main danger if you get them too hot that's usually what destroys stuff and then some components can't take a voltage in the reverse direction uh, or whatnot so there's other issues that arise but the the main problem with electronics is they get too hot and you know they can get quite warm and be okay but at some point they'll get too hot and for these resistors, at their size, they can dissipate a quarter of a watt of resistance. I have here a 10 watt resistor. It has a lot lower resistance, so a lot more current would flow through it with the same voltage. Uh, but it can dissipate a lot more uh, power. So you can put a lot more current through here. And it won't get as hot. You can see all this surface area, the more surface area, the, the more it will spread out and the more air will just uh, slowly transport it off there. You could put some metal on here, it would work even better. Uh, the more metal attached to this, as long as you don't accidentally conduct something, it will help uh, direct the heat away from the component even better. But uh, just for in the air, not surrounded by other stuff, and uh, too, too cramped because the other components can uh, warm each other up too. But uh, as long as there's you know regular airflow and whatnot this can dissipate 10 watts of uh, power and as I said you could add metal to increase it and so that's uh, what you gotta be aware of you add up the uh, voltage drops and the resistance the order is not crucial but I made uh, some mistakes I didn't even plan on making while making this video where I wired stuff up because I assumed the resistor was on the positive side of the circuit even though I already had the cathode or the anode here of the LED to the positive rail 
I just kind of assumed, hey, this is a resistor going to the LED. I put it to the positive rail when I should have put it to negative. So, the uh, there's reasons why, usually, why things are done the way that they are done, but that does not usually mean they have to be done that way. Another thing is like resistors. So, you can see uh, this resistor, I have the color code set up. It's 220 ohms. We have red, red, black, black, and then uh, brown for the uh, t uh, tolerance. It can be 1% higher or lower than its rated value. And so that's the way you read it. Red, red, black, black. So red is two, red is two, black is zero. And then you have black to indicate there's no more zeros. So zero zeros after that. And it's actually a multiplier. But uh, for most uh, values, this system works good. If you turn it this way, that's not how you read its value. And it may be in the circuit this way. The circuit will work exactly the same no matter which way you turn them but now the uh, stripes are that way and it makes it you know harder to read it and so it kind of looks a little more sloppy but electrically it doesn't matter which way you pass current through a resistor whatever voltage you put across it its resistance is going to limit the current but it's better to uh, put them in the way that you read them and you could also read them up to down if you go that way and uh, I missed the spot there but uh, either way uh, electrically it doesn't really matter but there may be reasons why you want to do things the way that uh, everybody else is doing so hopefully that made sense and uh, this is uh, uh, kind of common sense after you've uh, built circuits for a little while but uh, uh, I can see why it's it's confusing at first. I don't remember this being terribly confusing for me, but maybe it was. I really started learning electronics uh, in the 90s. So, in any case, don't feel bad if something's confusing. Just try to figure it out. And uh, once you figure it out, it's, it's going to make sense forever after that. So, don't feel bad if something's confusing now. At some point, you'll understand it. It'll be easy. It'll be common sense. And you'll wonder why anybody else is uh, having trouble understanding it after that point. So thanks for watching.